بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبيب في الله as we mentioned uh, just uh, as the, it was in response to a question a brother asked about how to distinguish the truth from falsehood or how to uh, you know how to uh, to to be balanced in essence how to be balanced this is another part of the question that I didn't address with regards to what the brother's question he was asking about how to distinguish between Ahlul Sunnah and Ahlul Bidah and we mentioned some general things from uh, Aqidah to Wasatiyah that uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Imam uh, Al Mujaddid Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in Aqidah to Wasatiyah and that gives us a general idea about who Ahlul Sunnah is and what goes against that is Ahlul Bidah and how to distinguish one thing uh, that's very important that I failed to mention and I just wanted to very quickly mention with regards to uh, people speaking about a particular scholar and he for example he mentioned Sheikh Rabi Hafizullah Ta'ala and then some some people warning against the Sheikh and some people um, who just listen to any and everyone so what we'll find in a lot of these Masa'in and a lot of these issues is you'll find as a lot of the ulama mentioned wasatiyah is being in the middle being balanced so that not spending all of your time involved in refutations and especially if you don't have the tools to uh, to to benefit from those refutations and to determine the truth from falsehood so don't spend a lot of your energy in that however that does not negate that refutations are from the deen and that refutation will continue to be needed because Ahlul Bidah is kathir there's many 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 people from Ahlul Bidah that call to call to the fire call to the the la as the prophet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it in how many ahadith he warned us against bidah and innovation he didn't warn us those from those things because they would never take place or they didn't take place after his time he didn't warn us just for the sake of it was hawa he didn't speak from his desires. So instead he warned us for a reason. When he said, If Tarakatil Yahuda Lahitu was about in Firka, with Tarakatil Nasara Lathanatain was about in Firka, was the Tartari who had the Umma Latalata was about in Firka, Kulla Kulla Fenari Lawida, Kulla Menhia Yarasulullah, Kalaman Kana Alamithi, Makana Ali was Habi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. He said that the Jews were breaking the 71 sects, Christian 72 sects, my Umma 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon, radiyallahu ta'ala mijma'in. That lets us know that the Ummah would break apart and they would call the different things. And those other paths would lead to the hellfire. And that the only way to be saved is to be upon what the Prophet sallallahu was on. So that's affirming for us the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what his companions were upon, radiyallahu ta'ala mijma'in. Anyone who speaks ill of the Sahaba, you know that they've already, they've already deviated from that path, even if they claim to be from Ahlul Sunnah. So that is something, a very important principle to affirm for yourself. Whenever you hear, we're not saying someone uh, mentioning, uh, even the, the Salaf, they didn't like to mention the Khilaf between the Sahaba, what the, the, diff, the Sahaba's uh, fighting, radiallahu ta'ala anam ijma'in, and those other things that took place between them. They didn't, uh, excessively mention those things because there are so many ahadith and so much nasus to show us the 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 the, the 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 status of the sahaba and that they should be loved. The Prophet ﷺ said, "La sahabi," and many many nasus to illustrate for us this. So whoever you hear is speaking ill, they say Muawiyah was this. He implemented the. Uh, this or he implemented kingship he introduced this or wh whatever they they say you will hear many things from the people then those people you should run for so that's the first criterion to run for as far as refuting Ahlul this is from the religion but we should leave that to those people who have the knowledge and ability to, to, to deal with those issues it's not for everyone to jump in in there and involve ourselves with at the same time so that's the balance. The balance is not involving yourself too much because if you do, it can really weaken your iman and cause confusion. 
especially if you have people who are really calling to the sunnah, both of them, but then they have a difference. Or their masjid and this masjid, they have problems with one another. And they warn against this one, and this one warns against this one, or whatever the situation may be. So then when you have this kind of fitna, fitna between Ahl Sunnah, it's best to just keep seeking knowledge, ask advice from the scholars, if you have the ability to do so, and try to just not involve yourself with the fitna. Because most of the time, the fitna will not benefit you. Most of the time, 99% of the time, now this is 99% is coming from me, but most of the time we definitely can safely say that there will be no benefit for you in the fitna and involving yourself. You're not going to strengthen you any man. It's not going to help you pray fajr, and it's not going to tell you better who who to take knowledge from if you're if you have to take knowledge from those those camps of brothers. So do not involve yourself in fitna. Strive to be balanced, not running from refutations in entirety, but not involving yourself in entirety. And allowing for those refutations to be amongst those people who have knowledge. They have to have knowledge of what they're refuting. They have to have knowledge of what the truth is and knowledge of what they're refuting and so forth. And who they're addressing, who they're bringing these refutations to. Should we bring the refutations, for example, between ulama, ulama of Ahl Sunnah, or maybe even an alim from Ahl Sunnah and, and, and a scholar from Ahl Bid'ah or what have you. Should we bring this always to the English speaking world, people who don't know Arabic? And who will never be able to take from either one of those, or at least the person of bid'ah? Is that necessary to beat that into the people's heads about, you know, these are the principles of so-and-so, stay away from so-and-so, stay away from so-and-so. Allah knows best. There's a time and a place for that. But it doesn't mean that all, all of our time is spent on those issues. Because you have to come closer to Allah. This is what it's all about. When you're going to the grave, this is what you're going to be asked for. So I hope that this is this clarifies something for us. And these are huge, huge, huge issues. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq. Anything I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said was incorrect from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.